I'm kind of liking this Desmond Hart guy. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. If you like Dune, Dune Prophecy, and all this fun stuff, hit that subscribe button. We're gonna talk about it as much as we can on this channel, and we're hoping to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're on our way there, we're very close. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's get right into it. Episode two, Two Wolves of Dune Prophecy hit last night. I wanted to talk about it. First episode I thought was a bit of, was a little bit slow. It was a slow build. I enjoyed it for all it was. I like slow stuff. So I was like, okay, let's see where they're going. It still seems like this series is getting, you know, trying to find their footing. They're not quite there yet. It has elements of like, oh, this is great. And then sometimes I'm like, yeah, all right, let's, Let's keep going, let's move on. But I am enjoying it still. I'm not gonna complain about that. Like I said, there's things about it that I'm not too crazy about. I'm not gonna harp on those things too much. So I wanna talk about the positives because I do enjoy the show and I feel like, you know, once they really kind of figure it out, I think that this could be a really, really great epic saga that we're gonna watch. I think there's some things, like I said, I need to stay away from, but they're building it up. I think the sisterhood dynamic is really cool. I'm really enjoying to see that. And I'm enjoying, like I just said, Desmond Hart. This character kind of came out of nowhere. He survived a sandworm attack. He escaped it. There's something at play here. No one quite knows exactly what's going on with him. The emperor can't figure him out. The sisterhood can't figure him out. The duke, nobody knows what's up with this guy but everybody wants a piece of him and they want to take him out. And then that is when Natalia Rat is like, whoa, whoa, let's use him to our benefit. Because at first the emperor's like, I'm going to put you in prison. By the way, the prison, when they float, I'm like, yo, this is what I want to be in. That seems kind of cool. He's floating around. I was like, yeah. That seems pretty awesome. But it was a good episode, so I'm going to go into it. This is my review. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Did you like Dune Prophecy Episode 1? And what did you think of Episode 2, Two Wolves? From the moment this episode begins, I felt immersed in the tension that permeates the Emperor's Court on Seleucus Secundus and the enigmatic rituals of the Bene Gesserit. It's called Two Wolves, and it's very symbolic of the show's overarching themes, conflict, duality, and the constant struggle for power. This episode particularly leans into these themes, pitting loyalty against ambition and faith against fear. The Bene Gesserit subplot stood out to me. The agony ritual where the young acolyte Leela is forced to confront her genetic memory by ingesting the toxic Rosak poison is a visually stunning and narratively rich sequence. The show stays true to Herbert's lore here, using the ritual not as a spectacle, but as a way to explore Leela's lineage and the stakes of the Bene Gesserit's mission. I really thought this was a cool moment in the show. I really like seeing this. I hope we get to see more things like this within the Sisterhood and the Dune lore. The visual depiction of Lila's struggle, the swirling colors and disorienting cuts between her present self and the glimpses of her ancestors was mesmerizing. It's a bold move to dedicate so much screen time to a single event, but I felt it was worth it. Lila's terror here, hesitation, and her eventual enlightenment felt deeply personal, yet it also tied into the larger mythology of the Bene Gesserit. What I appreciate most about this sequence was how it connected to the Bene Gesserit's prophetic mission. The idea that Lila, as a descendant of Rakella, the founder of the Order, might hold the key to understanding Desmond Hart's role in their universe adds layer of tension. Still, I couldn't help but feel the pacing dragged at times. For all its beauty, the scenes might test the patience of viewers who aren't already invested in Dune's intricate lore. Switching over to the Imperial side of stuff, I love the way they are depicting Carino in this series. His inability to act decisively, especially when dealing with Valia Harkonnen's interrogation of Desmond Hart, creates an interesting dynamic. Valia continues to shine as one of the show's strongest characters, balancing ruthlessness with an almost magnetic charisma. Her interrogation of Hart was a standout moment. His immunity to the voice, a weapon the Bene Gesserit rarely failed to wield, felt like a pivotal revelation but the emperor is so frustrating and i kind of like it but he's like ah dude what's up his indecisiveness while intentional risks making him seem more like a pawn than a ruler i get that this is likely setting up his eventual downfall or redemption but i wanted more layers to this character beyond being manipulated by those around him. Mark Strong is such a fantastic actor that I hope they really start to utilize him a little bit more. Again, do a little bit more with this role. Like I said, I am enjoying him. He is kind of a pawn, but I want to see them utilize him and his strengths a little bit more. The title, of course, was Two Wolves, and this resonated throughout the episode. There's a clear focus on duality, loyalty versus betrayal, action versus inaction, and spiritual faith versus political pragmatism. The wolves seem to represent the opposing forces within every character. Lila faces her fear of death and her faith in the Bene Gesserit mission. 
Valia wrestles with her ambition and her tenuous loyalty to the Emperor. Even Desmond Hart, enigmatic as he is, embodies his duality with his cryptic actions and mysterious past. I thought this was a beautifully shot episode. I think this took episode one and took it to the next level. I thought the visual effects were stunning and I thought the cinematography was very good in this. The acting is usually pretty top-notch in this series, but visually I think it's a beautiful looking show. It's on par with any movie I've seen. It's not quite the Denny Villeneuve Dune movie, but obviously the budget of this is quite <laughs> less than those movies were as well, but it looks phenomenal. I'm like, this looks great. I love the aesthetic and the feel that this show is giving us. And that's part of the reason why I think I'm along for the ride is it's just so beautiful to look at. While the episode excelled in atmosphere and thematic depth, it struggled with pacing. The extended focus on the agony ritual while captivating slowed the momentum of the episode. Additionally, the political intrigue on Salusa Sancundus through, though fascinating, felt like it lacked a climactic moment. I wanted a scene that really pushed the stakes higher, but instead it felt like the episode was holding back, saving its punches for later. I did love the moment with Desmond Hart and the Duke and how he burned him alive from the inside. I'm like, oh, are we going to get him burning somebody from the inside every week? Because I might be on board with that. But I like the way they kind of, they sprinkled the Duke in throughout to kind of show how he was. But he's also a grieving father, but he's pushing back against the Emperor. And we see the loyalty that Desmond Hart has now with Carino and with the Imperium. We're starting to learn this a little bit more, but we still don't know where he's coming from. And that's the mystery that's going to keep us around. And as long as that has a good payoff, this could be like this season could be a really solid series of TV. But again, I think they got to have, they got to find their focus a little bit more. They might be throwing a little bit too many balls in there, juggling a little too many balls, drive it home. I am liking it, but, but I want to know that I need to have an understanding of where all these characters are going, where they're heading. We're getting that. I feel like their feet are getting a little bit more planted, but we're still early in the season, I know, but I'm just not fully on board with everything they're doing just yet, and I hope we get there, and I hope next week is an improvement on this week and the following week, which I felt this week was on last week, and that's how series should be, right? In the end, I came away from Two Wolves with a mixed admiration uh, and frustration. The episode's dedication to Dune's lore is commendable, and its visuals are some of the best I've seen on television this year, but I hope... The future episodes can find a better balance between exposition and forward momentum. For fans of Dune who appreciate deep dives into the franchise mythology, this episode is a rewarding watch. However, for newcomers or casual viewers, I found that its slow pacing and dense narrative might make it a tougher sell. So yeah, I kind of have this feeling like if you're a Dune fan, like someone who loves Dune, you might be all in on this show. And if you're not so into Dune, it's not so invested in Dune, you might not be. I'm kind of in the middle of the Dune franchise. I kind of like Dune and I kind of, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of it, and that's how I kind of feel about the show. It's like, I do enjoy it, but I'm not dying to get at it every week. But but I, but I enjoy it, and I want to see where it's going, and I really think that if they can secure these characters, make these characters, uh, like, just punch them up just a little bit, I'm all in. Desmond Hart, for me, is a standout right now. Although I do think Valia is phenomenal, and they're dynamic. When we, when we get that in this episode, I hope we get more of that, because there is a chess game at hand, and those two characters are going to go head-to-head, -head, and I really can't wait to see how that how they handle it and how they manipulate each other and where that's going to go. The fact that the voice doesn't work on Desmond Hart and he knows Valia's true fear, the fear that every, people might hear her but not listen to her, that is staggering. And the expression and, and the Watson's portrayal on that scene was just phenomenal, her reaction to that, because the heart is reacting, is reacting, and she did a great job in that. And I'm really like, okay, where is it going to go? And now she has a bone to pick with Desmond. That's even harder, escalated even more than it was last week. Can't wait to see where it goes. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Did you like Dune Prophecy Episode 2, Two Wolves? Or are you kind of a wash on this series? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe.